In this module, we are going to learn about the um, different non-parametric test related to the, especially the ANOVA related, uh, that is where, in, as you know, that in ANOVA there are some parametric assumptions. You know, when it doesn't hold, then you have no other choice than apply a non-parametric test. Mainly, we are focusing on in this module are uh, the first is the, you know, two-way ANOVA or repeated measure ANOVA, the alternative of two-way and repeated measure. And is a Friedman test, and then with the postdoc test corresponding to the Friedman test, and then you know how to get the empirical distribution function and the density, how to get a density function uh, to get that idea about the uh, distribution uh, non parametrically, and then finally we will know how to you know apply the Kolmogorov's mean of test that you know when you are you I mean sometimes that cumulative distribution or empirical uh, distribution function may not help you to get a complete idea about the distribution of the test while you are comparing or trying to match with some parametric distribution in that case you know statistical test like Kolmogorov's mean of test might help us to you know identify whether that particular data supporting this distribution or not or sometimes you know the measure of goodness I mean the goodness of fit test can be you know uh, done through the Kolmogorov's mean of test instead of chi-square test. So we learn the Kolmogorov's mean of test in, uh, in uh, R you know, how to use those in R. In this module, we'll discuss few more you know, non-parametric tests. Uh, it's a continuation of the previous module. You know, we'll start with the Friedman rank sum test. Uh, the Friedman test can be used for analyzing the unreplicated complete block design. For example, you know there is a exactly one observation in Y yield of each combination of levels of groups and blocks, where the normality assumptions may be violated. The null hypothesis is that, the, uh, apart from an effect of blocks, the location's parameter of y is the same in each of the group. If y is a matrix, the groups and the blocks are obtained from the columns and the row indices respectively. The n's are not allowed in groups and blocks. If y is contains n's corresponding to block are removed. The uses of this function called Friedman.test from stats package are you know three way you can use uh, like uh, only the Friedman.test pass only by Friedman test y stratified by groups and blocks Friedman.test then in a formula format I mean formula format is more uh, convenient compared to others. Uh, the pass by arguments are uh, the y is either a numeric vector of data values or a data matrix groups a vector giving the group for the corresponding elements of y if this is a vector ignored if y is matrix if not a vector objects it is coursed to one blocks a vector giving the block for corresponding elements of y if there is a vector ignored if y is matrix if not a factor object it is coursed with one a formula structure is as earlier you know a tilde sign b given c c is the block The argument data, an optional matrix or data frame containing the variables in the formula. By default, the variables are taken from environment uh, formula. The subset and optional vector specifying the subset of the observation to be used. It is you know, if you do the uh, do the test for a subset of the data, this variable can I mean this argument can be used to get the subset or the selected portion of the data any dot action uh, for the missing values if the data contain missing values any dot action will help you to exclude all the missing values from the data before uh, apply the fragment test next we'll see the one example in a comparison of three methods round out narrow angle and white angle for rounding first base for each 18 players and the the three methods the average time of two runs from a point on first baseline 
35 feet from home plate to a point of 15 feet short of second base is recorded. That is the data that has been entered in R from that uh, data given in that book. Uh, that rounding time is a, in a matrix form, uh, three columns that round the first one is a uh, round out, second one is a narrow angle and the third column is the wide angle. The name also has been given there. So the total number of uh, rows are 22. And then if you can see the data, the header of the rounding time and data frame is looks like this and the tail looks like this total 22 data points are there, 22. And the Feynman test can be applied. The Feynman dot test rounding table, if you can pass this data frame, it will generate the results of the, the first way of uh, generating uh, Feynman test result uh, out of the three that I have shown. So it will give you the Feynman chi-square uh, uh, test statistics, degrees of freedom and p-value. Here p-value is 0 0.003, so strong evidence against the NALA that the methods are equivalent with respect to the speed. The second way that we can uh, write uh, WD equals to another uh, seeing example. So WB equals to aggregate. Uh, this is the work P breaks data that we uh, uh, dollar breaks by least. The, that means this, this variable would be you know aggregated by uh, two variable uh, two factors is the wool and other factor is tension that function equals to mean. So this way the WB will, uh, the data would display like this. Then Friedman test can be applied of patching these three uh, column together say WB dollar X, WB dollar W and WB dollar uh, T. The first, the first variable, first argument should be the numeric value uh, and the second two arguments should be the two statified variables and that will generate the p-value, p-value uh, generate the Friedman test results. Uh, statistics degrees of freedom and p-value a p-value is 0 0.56 which is not at all significant the third way of uh, uh, doing a Friedman test uh, is a Friedman dot test x tilde sign w given t uh, data equals to wb and that is uh, the p-value is 0 0.056 the same test that we did in terms of uh, this format the p-value as usual is not significant it's the same results of the previous slides but you know arguments are given in a different format the friedman postdoc test provide provided that the friedman test indicates a significance the postdoc test according to the you know nimini 1963 can be employed you know, such 1997 page number 668. This test requires a balanced design. So n1 equals to n2 dot nk equals to n for each group and each group k and a Friedman type ranking of data. So say uh, record package PMC MMR and use this data y equals to matrix. This this is enter the matrix, you know, number of columns, six by six matrix that I mean six variables and six individuals data say looks like this, you know, the data, the box plots also, if you do the box plot, box plots also looks like uh, this. So that means there are three, uh, six parameters, A, B, C, D, E, F and total number of uh, rows are six, one, two, three, four, five, six and the box plot will give you some idea that uh, yeah, yeah probably they would be statistically significant i mean they are significantly different because you know not all the uh, boxes are overlapping each other few are quite distinct so friedman test can be applied so friedman dot test y uh, that will give you the friedman uh, p value P value is highly significant so in 0 0.0029 which is highly significant so next step should be the Friedman uh, I mean postdoc uh, Friedman in name name any um, postdoc test so the, the function is postdoc dot Friedman name any dot test and this this function is uh, available in PMCMR uh, package 
that if you don't have, you have to install it. So we'll use the postdoc uh, dot friedman dot nemini dot test and we'll pass the y within that and that will give you the pairwise comparison using nemini postdoc test. And this 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 matrix, the lower, lower triangular matrix, indicating the uh, corresponding mm -hmm. uh, the p value adjusted method, uh, the adjusted p values. And if you see, say a a b a b are not significantly different, whereas uh, the significant difference you can see a and c a a and e are significantly different, a and f are significantly different. Similarly. T, D and E are significantly different, D and F are significantly different, rest are not at all significantly different when you are, uh, do the pairwise comparison. Next we will uh, see how to generate an empirical distribution function. The easiest way to estimate the empirical distribution CDF uh, use the rank and the length of functions. The ECDF function that is available computes the empirical cumulative distribution function. ECDF.KSCI plots the empirical distribution function with confidence interval. By manually if you want to do you can just say n equals to 100 and then x equals to normal uh, r norm n. So suppose 1000 x values we have generated from standard normal distribution. And then the estimated degrees of uh, estimated uh, distribution function is, as I mentioned, that rank and length might help you. So rank of x divided by length of x, mm -hmm. and plot will, if you just plot x comma EDF, so uh, plot EDF against x will give you the estimated distribution function. Alternatively, one can use the. Uh, plot edf x x lab equals to x y lab is this and the grid some if, if you need the grid within the plot you can just call grid after the plot function it will generate a grid over there and now the next option is to use a function ecdf dot ksci that i mentioned uh, in the previous slide so it is available in the library sfs misc so if you don't have first you have to install the library and load it and then only you can use this function just pass x within that function then automatically it will generate the uh, cdf as well as 95 percent confidence interval the case when that uh, chronographs mean of band uh, will be generated there so there will be three plots the middle one is the uh, estimated a estimated distribution function and left uh, low the these two red lines indicating the 95 percent confidence interval the kolmogorov minov test it is generally a very difficult uh, to interpret the edf directly it is possible to compare an edf to a hierarchy uh, theoretical cumulative distribution function or uh, to another edf among the statistical tests that implement such a comparison is the Kolmogorov's mean of test which is implemented by R function case.test. One sample Kolmogorov's mean of test can be applied in this form say case.test x p norm. So x that I, we have generated from standard normal distribution and the null episode p norm that given if it is not significant that means it is a normal distribution if you see the it is yes it is 0 0.6 0 0.6081 so it is not at all uh, significant it is not significant means null hypothesis is true that is null hypothesis was it is normal it is not equal to normal so null hypothesis is true it is normal the two side uh, two sample kolmograph mean of test can be applied by passing two variable together um, separated by comma say another variable you can generate from uniform distribution of the same length and pass x comma y case dot test x comma y that will give you the, the d and the p value and two sided test by default so p value is much much lesser than uh, 2.2 to, to, uh, to, to the power minus 16 so it is almost zero so it is statistically significant. 
Next, we'll, we'll learn how to generate the density plot. You know, this is one of the non-parametric way of getting the distribution of the data instead of finding a parametric uh, distribution, the matching of parametric distributions, though that this density plot might also give you the idea about you know, which parametric distribution can be uh, approximated. But this, the density plot is actually non-parametric way of or empirical way of uh, getting a distribution of any data without assuming any parametric, rigid parametric uh, function. The histogram is one of the methods to get a density estimations, you know, get an idea about the distributions. To draw a histogram, you know, there are different methods of drawing histograms. The default method is, you know, star j's, that is, uh, suppose x is, um, uh, generated from uh, normal this is simulated data x is one variable and if you pass x and break x equals to star, star j's and probability equals to true the distribution the density estimation would be based on star j's technique and this is you know star j's you know which is 1926 the choice of class interval journal of american statistical association <coughs> Then uh, the density estimate for you know, the Friedman, uh, Friedman uh, is 1981, at all 1981, on the histogram as a density estimator, L2 theory. So uh, this this can be done uh, by just mentioning breaks equals to FD. Um, uh, start start J's, instead of start J's, you just uh, breaks equals to FD in the same, then it will be generated. And the squat uh, 1978 on optimal and data based histogram biometrica. Same way, you, know, you can do just uh, write breaks equals to squat. Then, one 1995 database choice histogram bandwidth, the American statistician. Uh, so, here the library kernels mood you have to call uh, now h equals to dph uh, x. And bean equals to say um, sequence minimum x minus h to maximum x maximum x of x plus h by h, and then histogram x breaks equals to beans, and probability equals to true. That's the way you can draw the density for now according to the paper 1995. The kernel density estimation. The density is a function that might help to generate the kernel density, get the kernel density estimate. The choice of the bandwidth selection method with BW, uh, check the sensitivity of the bandwidth choices using adjust. The default is 1. It is good practice to look at adjust 0 0.5 and adjust 2. So the plot density, you know, the function is density plus the value x within the density function x then bandwidth is n at d0 adjust one kernel is gaussian column is color uh, uh, color equals to one then line another x then n at d0 adjust 0 0.5 kernel gaussian then adjust up to two so there are three choices that are uh, adjustment 1.5 and 2 and the, uh, the top right legion equals to I mean to, uh, you can write the legion as a top, a top right where the legion is C adjust equals to 1 adjust equals to 0.5 adjust equals to 2 and color 1 to 3 LTY equals to 1 and that will give you a uh, kernel density plot. One can choose the kernel function with you know kernel Gaussian you know uh, kernel rectangular triangular by weight uh, cosine optocosine you know, any whatever you want, a you know, lot of choices are there. You know, for further details, you, you can see the help of the particular function density. And this is the same thing that uh, instead of all Gaussian, we just change from Gaussian to other different uh, density function. I mean, parametric function as a kernel dense uh, kernel. So Gaussian to rectangle to triangular uh, kernel and that has been plotted here. 
so it's yeah, and then the bivariate kernel density also can be plotted by the kd 2d mass estimates a bivariate kernel density and this is the mass package so from mass package you will get these functions you have to load the mass package i mean for example say for uh, bivariate uh, normal distribution say x, x generated from the standard normal and y generated by 1 plus x square plus r norm 1000 and then x and y so dd is kd to d y comma x will give you the bivariate density function and that can be plotted one is contour another phi image the left side is the contour plot co and your d contour you pass d it will be a contour and right side is the image if you pass d that will give you the image function uh, image of uh, this uh, uh, bivariate kernel and that will give you some idea about the uh, bivariate kernel density and even univariate and bivariate kernel density so i think that's uh, cover more or less the non parametric uh, basic non parametric statistics might be required uh, at at this stage in this module we have learned you know how to apply the friedman rank sum test in r and then how to generate uh, the empirical distribution function and how to perform the goodness of non parametric goodness of fit test to Kolmograph uh, Smirnov test and how to generate the density plot in R.